A tipping point as something that happens to the climate system that's irreversible on human timeframes. Can't get back to the old climate state, not for potentially millennia. The one that matters for Antarctica is essentially the point at which the ice shelves are all gone. And that will cause very rapid sea level rise above the levels of the current projections. So the Antarctic ice sheet itself sits on continental bedrock. But the ice essentially flows from a high point to a low point, then it hits the ocean, and so it flows onto the ocean, it floats on the ocean, and we call that the ice shelf. The Ross Ice Shelf is a spectacular example. It's the biggest ice shelf in the world, size of France, size of Texas. But there are ice shelves all around the coast of Antarctica, and what these ice shelves do is they hold back the ice flowing off the continent and they slow down the dynamic flow of ice under gravity into the ocean. Unfortunately, these ice shelves are all melting, they're all thinning because the ocean is warming and in some places around West Antarctica it's warming a lot. The last ice shelf, for example, the, the size of England and it, it, it essentially disintegrated in a couple of months. Then what happened? The glaciers feeding the Larsen Ice Shelf sped up 10 times. So we're seeing that happen all around Antarctica. And what we think is that there will be a threshold whereby the ocean warms and all those ice shelves are, are gonna pretty much go at once and they're gonna go very, very fast. And once they go, then there's nothing to stop the rest of the ice sheet just sliding into the ocean. Now there's another wrinkle here, another instability. So West Antarctica essentially sits in a big bowl below sea level. Large parts of it are two kilometres below sea level. So that warm ocean nibbles away at the edges and gets into the soft underbelly. You can imagine you've got this ice sheet flowing into the ocean, but as it retreats into the bowl, the edges of the ice sheet start to lose the grip on the side of the bowl. It's, it's clinging on to the edges, but it's about to slip off. There's nothing for them to hold on to anymore. And so what happens is you, it's like a bunch of dominoes falling over. These ice cliffs just topple. And we've seen that in Jakobs Harbin Glacier up in Greenland. You know, it's an incredible thing to watch. These immense ice cliffs, 30 kilometers long, just boom. And if that really plays out at large scale around Antarctica, we're grossly underestimating the amount of sea level rise from Antarctica. Ultimately, the key thing is carbon dioxide warming the climate. The natural climate cycles, which have regulated the ice ages, occur exactly in step with the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In other words, it is the pacemaker of Earth's climate. And CO2, the greenhouse gases, and Earth's temperature are totally locked. We know from ice core records and geologic records that you have to go back three million years to see a time when our planet last had 400 parts per million carbon dioxide on the atmosphere. Here we have the Andrew drill system sitting here on the Ross Ice Shelf. We made a whole 84 metres... So one of the areas of research I've spent much of my life doing is drilling sediment cores from around the Antarctic margin. We drilled back to sediments that were 3 million years old to answer that question when CO2 is at 400 parts per million or higher. What happened to Antarctica? What happened to the sea ice? What happened to the ice sheet? How warm did it get? To give us information about the world we're heading into and we were able to reconstruct what was living in the Ross Sea, and it was algae. And we know that this algae lives north of the polar front these days in the sub-Antarctics. So we know that the Ross Sea was five degrees warmer than present, no sea ice, and we know that the Ross Ice Shelf had collapsed. There is no West Antarctic ice sheet. And not only that, we know from other drilling projects that big parts of the East Antarctic ice sheet also disappeared. Global sea level records from around the world tell us that sea level was about 20 metres higher. 
So the Paris target says we must limit global warming to less than two degrees. And this is one of the reasons. It's a tipping point for the Antarctic ice sheet. Even if we achieve the Paris target, we'll get 50 centimetres of sea level rise in a century. That's baked in from the heat that's already in the system. People underestimate what 50 centimetres really means for us globally. 800 million people around the world are going to be affected by high tide flooding. It's the rising sea level, but it's also the storms that are on top of that rising sea level. And so, you know, Hurricane Sandy that wiped out big parts of Manhattan. Water is splashing over the sea walls at the tip of lower Manhattan. Those sort of coastal flooding events will be an annual occurrence. And we can't avoid that, that's locked in. So we've got to adapt to a living in a warmer world. The latest generation of ice sheet computer models incorporating these instabilities predict up to two metres of sea level rise a century, unless we aggressively reduce our emissions. People feel it's a hopeless situation, and it's not a hopeless situation. In fact, the science tells us we still have a chance to solve this problem, get on top of it anyway, and, and, and avoid the worst. Just in the last few years, we were seeing a sea change in the world. Young people in the streets protesting, pissed off. Politicians starting to take it more seriously, governments starting to really make it a top priority. We can all limit our carbon footprint hugely. It requires a global response. If we take action, we create a better world, both in terms of how we save the climate and in terms of how we save ourselves.